So a bit of Robocast lore, I used to be a big unturned guy. Like I played it way too much. It was how I gained my first 100,000 subscribers on YouTube, it was how I met a lot of friends that I still talk to today, and it was how I learned to edit and produce videos. I have over 1900 hours in the game, which is kind of depressing to admit, because well, that's 79 days of my life. And me just saying that out loud is definitely going to make me rethink my existence. I'll be right back. For real though, I used to play the hell out of Unturned, and I had a great time while doing it. If you haven't played the game, you're probably going to be like, shut up you stupid man-child virgin. And while that's a great insult for a guy with nearly 2000 hours in the game, I want to spend some time explaining to you why this game is worthy of not one, not two, but hundreds of dedicated videos on my channel. I'm telling you, please don't watch the old ones. In the past, I made some criticisms of Unturned and so have tons of other present day Unturned YouTubers, but I'm now looking at this game with a fresh perspective. After that video, I took a multi-year break from the game because I was burnt out. But I recently came back and played it again for the first time in years. And I have to say, a lot of the criticisms that I gave it come from playing it in excess. Yeah, Chicken Little is the best movie ever made, but if you watch it three times a day for a year, you'll probably begin to see a lot more flaws than the traditional Chicken Little enthusiast. I'm not saying Unturned is perfect, obviously it's not. But there are tons of good things about the game that get pushed under the radar due to selective perception. When people begin to focus on the bad, the good goes unnoticed. I'm here today to show you why this impressive little zombie game made almost entirely by one person has garnered over 30 million downloads and has tens of thousands of active players years after its original early access launch. There is a lot more to this game than initially meets the eye, and we're going to cover all of the specifics and more in today's video talking about why Unturned is so awesome. Also, I'm a little sick, so I apologize if I sound weird. Let's pretend this is a traditional video game essay, but instead of starting every video talking about the entire history of the universe and how it led to the foundation of the gaming industry, how about we just start with the brief history of Unturned? So, this game, that all of my non-gamer friends assume is Roblox, actually started out as a game mode in Roblox. It was called Dead Zone and it was made by a 16-year-old Canadian kid named Nelson Sexton in 2013. This little game mode was a zombie survival mode and it got quite a bit of traction with over 5 million plays being acquired over the years. Nelson was quite young when he made this and he was pretty inexperienced. So when he went to create version 2 of Dead Zone to improve upon his previous mistakes, he tried to do it in the Roblox engine. But he realized how bad the engine actually was and decided it was time to work on his own standalone zombie survival game in Unity. This kid had absolutely no idea what he was doing and he created what is now known as Unturned 1.0 in a fairly short amount of time, as you could tell by, well, how bad the game is. This shit was absolute ass. So it didn't last long, and he started work on 2.0 a few months later in 2013 or early 2014. I don't remember which because that was a long time ago and I can barely remember what I ate for lunch today. So yeah, 2.0 was when the game improved drastically and this is around the time when I started playing as well. Now in modern, intellectual terms, this shit also do be a little ass. But back then it was a lot of fun. It was the catalyst that would lead to Unturned being one of the most popular games on Steam today, and it would also lead to what would later become Unturned 3.0, or the one that most people are familiar with. You see, as Nelson continued to learn more about game development, he realized that the foundation he built 2.0 on wasn't up to his standards. So he overhauled everything once again, and in mid to late 2014, Unturned 3.0 would launch into early access on Steam. Boom, that's the story cut down into bite-sized pieces. Now it's time to get into the review of the game itself and talk about why it still stands out as one of the most played games on Steam even today. If you have a cool name like Nelson Sexton, you can make it even cooler by adding the title Lord in front of it. Imagine hearing about a game made by Lord Nelson Sexton, you would almost be required by law to play it. That's where Established Titles comes in, the sponsor of today's video. This is Scotland. A cool place where people have the honor of being able to call themselves lords or ladies if they own land. Established Titles allows people to buy as little as one square foot of land in Scotland, where they can then get this cool certificate and call themselves a lord or lady. You see, I am now allowed to be called Lord Robocast, so I would like you to refer to me as that from now on. When you buy this plot of land, a tree is planted in your honor, not that you died, but in honor of you being cool enough to call yourself a lord. 
Established Tidal's primary goal is to provide a fun way to help preserve the picturesque woodlands and biodiversity of Scotland, while raising funds to support planting more trees around the world. In fact, they support charities like One Tree Planted and Trees for the Future to do exactly this. You get a certificate proving your title and a unique plot number that you can use to see the exact location of your newly acquired land. This is one of the coolest and best last minute gifts ever, and it's something that could allow you to officially change your name to Lord or Lady, and put it on your credit card, plane tickets, and more. If you want a cool certificate like this, a great gift idea, or the ability to help the planet and add Lord slash Lady in front of your name, check out established titles using my link in the description. Plus, use code ROBOCAST for an extra 10% off. Thanks again to established titles for sponsoring this video. I'm not going to waste time going over the specifics of how a survival game works. You guys know that. You gotta loot stuff, shoot stuff, not die, build some things, not die, drink a lot of food and water, take your vitamin C, etc. That's common sense at this point. This game, like any other survival game, has a lot of those mechanics. There's a heavy focus on traversing the maps and looting items, maintaining your hunger and thirst, and getting better gear as you go. So I'll skip that, but I will talk for a bit about playstyle. The first thing that makes Unturned so awesome, and a big reason why a lot of people have tons of hours in this game, stems from the freedom to play it however you want. There are currently 5 official maps, 13 curated maps, and probably hundreds or even thousands of workshop created maps. Each and every map offers an entirely different playstyle and experience that the other maps can't. For example, Washington is my personal favorite map. It's pretty spread out, but it's close enough to easily be able to walk the entire thing, with dense urban centers for high energy looting and PvP battles with other players. Russia is a lot more spread out and has a lot more of a focus on settling down and building a long-term base. PEI is super compact and since it's set in Canada, everybody just waves to each other and continues on their way. This is the case with each and every map, and within these maps you can determine even further how you want to play. In Washington, some people like to build bases in the buildings, others like to go into the corners away from everyone, and some people are nomads who live out of their vehicles. It's entirely up to the player, and how you do things stems down to personal preference. Thus, no matter how many times you play the game, there is unlimited potential to keep playing and not get bored. And don't even get me started on the workshop and modding capabilities. Because, well, I'm not going to start on it, and I'm saving that for later in this video. But let me know in the comments what your favorite way to play the game is. Do you like roleplay servers, vanilla, survival, or PvP? Drop a comment and let me know, I'm curious to see what you guys think. As you play unturned on each of the maps and with whatever playstyle you choose, guns are always going to be a big focus. And in unturned, there are, well, a lot of guns. I'm not going to go through the effort to count all of these, but each map has different guns that fit the region, like French guns in France, and rocks that you have to shoot like spitballs out of vodka bottles in Russia. There are tons of different snipers, machine guns, bows, shotguns, pistols, heavy weapons, nail guns, paintball guns, and anything else that your heart will ever desire. The ballistics of the guns are fairly straightforward with a fair amount of bullet drop and recoil depending on which gun you're using, but this is a good thing. Unturned is a simplistic but yet extremely complex game, and the complexity is focused more on player freedom than it is on complicated code and mind-blowing game mechanics. Yeah, there could very well be wind that affects where your bullets are going. But is that really necessary when your player model looks like this? As you loot the maps, you can find these various weapons scattered around, and in the official maps, without any settings tweaked, there's honestly a near-perfect balance between the tiers of loot that you find. I mentioned this in my old review of the game back in 2017, but Unturned has pretty satisfying looting. Much more so than other survival games like Daisy or Deadside, because you aren't struggling to survive. Games where you struggle could be a lot of fun if you're into hardcore games like Tarkov and you want to spend 85 hours collecting two cans and a half eaten avocado. But in free to play games with graphics that look like they originated on the Blackberry Curve 8900, it would be contradictory. Looting is very straightforward, with everything you need spawning on the ground or in cabinets or wardrobes. The loot is right there in front of you and there's no stupid shit like lockpicking or keycards or anything like that. There are regions that you need to have better gear to get into, and some of the maps have regions that require keycards, um, but it all flows well and looting is pretty much the same no matter where you are or how you do it. Regions with better loot usually have tougher zombies and things like dead zones around them. So you spend some time looting the lesser regions to get better gear, move to the next, repeat the process, and eventually get to the point where you can go anywhere. Not to mention, as you're exploring everything, more often than not you're going to be on a multiplayer server and there's a lot of PvP going on. 
PvP is probably one of the biggest aspects of this game, and combining that with the natural looting and survival aspects, it makes for a really good experience. Because of this tiered structure on most of the maps, looting never gets boring. Instead of wandering around, finding random things here and there, and then somehow finding a rare weapon when you don't even have pants on, Unturned lets you get geared as you progress and makes it to where you're always looking for the next thing while having enough items to stay alive. Then when you get into PvP encounters, you can always get better gear and it's always a challenge to fight the other players. Speaking of staying alive, I don't know how Nelson Sexton has done it for all these years. This man is without a doubt one of the most underappreciated indie game developers in the history of the industry. This guy, with very minimal amounts of help, has released hundreds of updates to his game throughout the last few years. For a while, towards the start of Unturned 3.0, he released an update every single Friday without missing. New guns, new maps, new mechanics, new items, and near perfect communication with his community. Two years ago, when I was 19, I was struggling to cook my ramen in my dorm microwave, and this man built an empire. The fact that he didn't give up should be looked at as an inspiration to other indie game developers. He received tons of criticism and hate for some of the changes he made that people didn't like, spent countless hours updating a game that had released out of early access and had no further requirement to be updated, and enjoyed it all throughout the entire process. Nelson also did a pretty good job doing what fans wanted. I mean, as we've learned based on some other videos that I've made, what the fans want isn't always the best option for the game. But Nelson managed to find that perfect balance between what improved the game and what would keep people happy. I know, I know, I sound like a fanboy, but it's because I am. Nelson, can you sign my limited edition unturned body pillow? But on a more serious note, it's not the limited edition, it's actually just a normal one. But on a more serious, serious note, props to you Nelson and Smartly Dressed Games for making something with so much heart in it. This is actually a big reason why I made this video in the first place because we are in an industry that's full of lazy cash grabs and this most definitely wasn't one of them. Mad respect. The maps, the gameplay loop, the variety, the guns, the PvP, and the looting are all great things that help to make this game so outstanding. However, there is one thing that tops all of these individual characteristics and goes hand in hand with the game's ability to let the player play how they want to. Modding and the workshop. Unturned has one of the best Steam workshops I've ever seen in any game, let alone a survival game. Yeah, there is quite a lot of trash on there, just like with any game's workshop, but there's also some mind-blowing mods that completely overhaul how the game is played. Nelson gave the community all of the tools that he had and allowed them to use these tools to make their very own maps, guns, items, mechanics, sounds, and anything else you could imagine. This has led to some massive mod packs and servers being created that create entirely new experiences that can't be found in the base game. For all the OGs out there, take Bootleg RP for example. If you've been subscribed for a while, you probably thought you would never hear that name again. A few years ago, when I made Unturned content, a group of modders created an experience in Unturned called Unturned Bootleg RP. Now I know, roleplay's a little cringe, but hear me out. This was a completely new game inside of Unturned that was set in the Prohibition era and had custom maps, cars, guns, outfits, factions, ores, resources, and tons of other things. Bootleg was some of the most fun I've ever had in Unturned, and believe it or not, even though it's been years since my last video on it, I still get comments every single day asking when it's coming back. But ambitious modders and server owners are constantly creating more and more unique things like a Rust themed mod, a Tarkov themed mod, and more. With the ability to create anything and the option to change literally any natural game settings in your server's config file, Unturned is a truly infinite replayable game and it's nearly impossible to get bored. Now I've briefly mentioned the PvP for a little bit, but I really don't want to spend a lot of time diving into it. However, it is something that I do need to mention quickly again. The PvP in Unturned is one of the biggest selling points for a lot of people. As I said before, the gunplay is fairly simplistic, but mixed with this gameplay loop of looting, building bases, and surviving, it creates a unique experience that really encourages PvP. I mean, why search for all the gear you need when you could just shoot someone and take all of it? The PvP in this game is quite a bit of fun, and honestly, that's the reason I get so invested into it. Because compare it to how much fun you would have in Rust PvP, but make it a little bit easier with not as many sweats. It's a great thing, and if you play the game, it's definitely something you have to experience. While in this whole video I've been worshipping this game, it's nowhere near perfect. The video is focused on the pros, which is why I haven't criticized it much, but there are most definitely some cons as well. Stupid Me back in 2017 said, Oh yeah, I really like the base building in this game. But he was wrong. 
Unturned base building absolutely sucks, and it's one of the weaker points in the game other than the vehicle physics. It's super complicated and requires you to craft individual components, spread them out all over the floor like they're your 5 year old's Halloween candy, and pick and choose what you need to place in each part. While some people may enjoy this, including me in 2017, I no longer do. I would much rather have it to where you can control all of your building options in a singular menu, similar to how it's done in Valheim. The game is also very heavily focused on crafting, which is a very below average feature in Unturned. Crafting menus are often pretty unorganized, and unless you're an expert in the game, you're going to struggle to find what you're looking for. The functionality and potential is there, but the execution is messy and it makes for a less than enjoyable experience. And don't even get me started on the community. There are some pockets of good people in this community if you can find them, but it's nearly impossible to do so because of the angry swarm of 6 year olds and toxic server owners who manipulate them into giving up their parents credit card information. The average maturity level in this game is about the same as that of angry K-pop Twitter stands who get mad when you think that BTS stands for Bluetooth speaker. It's most definitely the weakest point in the game and the community is quite toxic most of the time. This isn't to discourage you from playing it though. In fact, I've met some of my best online friends through Unturned and I've built lasting relationships with dozens of people through this game. Just be aware that you gotta be in the right place to find cool people and it may take some time to find exactly where in the game that place is. Even with the toxicity, the community is absolutely thriving though. In fact, the game just hit its all-time peak player count a few days ago, which I find extremely surprising considering how long ago it came out. Unturned is a true gem, and it's one of the most influential games in my life due to where it's allowed me to go with YouTube. Nelson is currently working on Unturned 2, a completely rebuilt sequel to the game that's probably going to be pretty damn good and will hopefully fix a lot of the problems that were found in the first game. I'm excited to see where it goes and if it can garner as much success as the original Unturned. If you want to chat about Unturned, Unturned 2, or any other games, come and join my new group chat with subscribers which will be linked in the description. I've drifted away from Discord because I just don't enjoy using it anymore, and this group chat is a good way for me to be active and still have some fun conversations with my subscribers. So again, click the link below if you want to join. Also, follow me on Instagram and Twitter to stay up to date with everything that's happening. Do you think Unturned is as good of a game as I've made it out to be, or do you think it's overrated? What are your experiences with this game? Let me know in the comments. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, I will see you next time, and peace.